is. So a lot of people mm. today, mm -hmm. they can't see his future. They right. can't see the star. Right. You know, that right. kind of thing. Right. And we need to inject some hope in mm. them and say that the star is coming again. Mm. Because mm. others could have thrown in the towel. Correct. And said, ah, inini, you know, I've, I've surrendered. Right. <laughs> uh, let's talk about hope. Right. What right. hope do we have? I cannot run my business life without committing it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. That is where I only get the hope that I need going into the future. I can't get hope from you. Yeah, you know. Shalom, everybody. Welcome again to our podcast and today I'm excited because uh, I've one of got one of the friends who is in the marketplace and I've had these bishops and all sorts of things so Dr. Douglas Mboweni is with me here and uh, welcome to to our podcast thank you very much Pastor. Yeah. Thank and you. Uh, thank you. you know one of the things that um, I'm just wanting us to discuss what mm -hmm. hope, you know, we, we, you know, let me read your scripture. Right. It says in Jeremiah 31 verse 17, there is hope for the future, for mm. your future, mm. uh, declares the Lord. Right. Your ch and your children shall come back to their own country. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, please, <laughs> can you comment? <laughs> Do we have hope? <laughs> uh, let's talk about hope. Right. What right. hope do we have? You know, I like that scripture, that your children will come back. Correct, yes, correct, I, correct. I, yeah. Pastor, the, the hope that we have mm -hmm. has to be based on the word of God. Right. If I look at Jeremiah 29, 11, it's very interesting you have made reference to Jeremiah. Yeah. But Jeremiah 29, 11 talks about, mm -hmm. I know the plans I have for you, uh -huh. declares the Lord. Yes. Now, these are plans not to harm us. Mm -mm. These are plans to prosper us, right. to give us hope and a future. You're right. Now, mm. that alone, mm -hmm. when you look at prosperity yeah. coming from the Lord, yes. uh, not to harm us coming from the Lord, mm -hmm. hope, yes. future. Now, these are very nice words, mm -hmm. but it also depends on where they are coming from, and they are coming from God, mm -hmm. because he's the king of kings. Right. Now, for me, that presents serious platform for us to be hopeful mm -hmm. and particularly in a time such as we are living now right pastor we have got serious challenges at an individual level right at a family level mm -hmm. but also even at a business level right at society level mm -hmm. at national levels yes and a lot of us we are asking to so so where is the hope coming mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. now if I can t start with the individual level, I can also start yes. with just with my own life. Yeah, okay. And I grew up in a village, and this village is in the southern part of Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. where a lot of people would say, what good can come out of that village? Mm -hmm. In fact, it was a situation where we could easily be very hopeless. Mm -hmm. But I remember from the very early stage, my dad was actually teaching me on the scriptures, and right. he was basically saying, have hope in God. Mm -hmm. And I used to ask why. That's because he's the only one who cannot let you down. Right. And my testimony from that time up, right. to, up to this time, right. I can testify that God has been faithful. Praise God. So that declaration which he made in Jeremiah 29, 11, mm -hmm. he has held it true in my own personal life right. to the extent that I can testify of it, mm -hmm. even as I talk to other people and so forth. I believe it's the, it's the same thing also with family. Right. I used that background myself as an individual that God has been so faithful, picking, up from, picking me up from a village which was for almost like good for nothing. Mm -hmm. And I said, he can do the same thing with my family. Right. He can do the same thing with my business. So mm -hmm. even in my business right now, right. I cannot run my business life without committing it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. That is where I only get the hope that I need going into the future. I can't get hope from anywhere else. You know, when you talk mm -hmm. about hope, right? these guys, yes. uh, they are shown a star, and then they said, 
a Messiah has been born. Right. And then as they start walking towards them, right, right. they start disappearing. Right, right. And then suddenly they start asking, hey, yes. have you seen, yes. you know, where is he born? Correct, you know, correct, correct. So when you were talking about hope, mm -hmm. uh, when the star came back, right, those guys, yes, they started being tracked back into Co line. Correct. So I, I, I think what you're saying now, mm. uh, so a lot of people mm. today, mm -hmm. they can't see his future. They right. can't see the star. Right. You know that right. kind of thing. Right. And we need to inject some hope in mm. them and say that the star is coming again mm. because mm. others could have thrown in the towel. Correct. And said, Ah, Inini, you know, I've, I've surrendered. Right. But I think this is one of the things. Mm. That that they, we have a lot of young people right, right. who want to throw in a towel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What is your advice to the young people? Pastor, the challenge we have mm. in the world we live in right now yeah. is that a lot of things that people put their hope in, they're not stable. Okay. So you need a constant reference point to hope. Okay. Something that does not shift. Something that does not move. Mm. Let me give you an example. If I put my hope in an individual, right. what happens if that individual dies? Mm -hmm. Because they do die. Okay. So I need something that will remain constant today, tomorrow, next year, and forever. Mm -hmm. And that which remains constant is God. Right. Now, a lot of people will say to me, so how do I relate to this God that you always talk about? Mm -hmm. For me, it has been standing on his promises. Right. Standing on his promises. Because the same God that we are talking about mm. says he is not a liar. Right. He's not a son of man. Mm -hmm. That he can change his mind. Right. So what we need to do, therefore, is to put our trust in him. Whatever he has made as a promise, he will fulfill. Mm -hmm. I remember way back when I was actually in primary school myself, a sister of mine actually... Um, told me something when we were going to school. Mm -hmm. um, I was very young. I can't remember whether it was grade 2 or grade 3. Mm -hmm. And along the road, she saw an aeroplane which was flying very high up in the sky. Right. And she says, eh, do you see that? What, does, what is that? They are, no, it's an aeroplane. And then she says, one day you are going to fly that aeroplane. Wow. Now, I, look, let me tell you what then that happened. That, that gave me an impetus to read. Okay. And no matter what anybody said to me, You're right. I said, I'm studying and I will go to university. One day I will fly an aeroplane. Ah. So, so that became a motivation for me in my primary school. And can I tell you, Pastor, that I was the second person in my village right. to go past to O-level. Wow. To go to A-level and to go to university. The second person. Okay. There were two people that came out of that village. Hmm. And the other guy had almost like the same story. We, we were clinging on to something that was actually pulling us beyond the challenges of our environment. Right. Now, I, I tell this story and some people say, look, so are you flying an aeroplane today? No. I said, look, I'm flying something better than an aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> something of which course. is even bigger than an aeroplane. Yeah, of yeah. course. So, so, so God, they have... And, 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 and she taught me also to say... Put your trust in God. Right. You can do everything. It, 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 through Christ who gives you strength. Philippians chapter 4, verse 18. Mm -hmm. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength, who right. strengthens me. Right. These things, when I'm getting tired, they really just give me a new impetus. Okay. So why, what am I saying? I'm saying young people, mature people, adults, must put their reference point or their hope on something that does not change. Okay. And what is it that does not change? The word of God, okay. God himself, mm. does not change. And when he promises, he fulfills. That, that has been my, my experience. That is a powerful, yes. you know, illustration. But, you know, mm -hmm. one of the things, I mean, for me, right. I mean, there was no hope in my <laughs> right. family because right. my dad, right. Right. Five children, yes, and he divorces my mother. Right. I was three months old, mm, mm. so there was no hope. Mm, mm. I mean, it was terrible. Right. So my mother takes me to my grandmother, right, and leaves a three months old. Mm -hmm. My grandmother says, "What do you want me to do mm, with this thing?" Mm, you know, mm. and it says she disappeared. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. She went away. Right. Then my brother rose up. Right. 
Oh, our firstborn, yes. that guy. Yes. I, I call him a torchbearer. Mm. So mm. I think one of the things we need now is right. torchbearers. Yes. If somebody who put a torch and, holds and it tell out. people, come with me, yes. I have hope. Yes. So what my brother did, mm. he mobilized us, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and you know, took all of us right, because right. we heard afterwards mm. that our mother had actually moved to northern Rhodesia, mm -hmm. Zambia, mm -hmm. and all. Mm -hmm. So he took mm -hmm. all of us right. and we went there. Right, right. Today, mm. when I hear the story of my brother, yes, yes. you know he was working for the railways here. Mm. He borrowed a bicycle, mm. not, not he bought a bicycle, right, right. he borrowed, borrowed a bicycle mm. to go. Mm. to centenary mm. uh, to you know to my village right right he arrived with the bicycle mm. Mm. they said what have you come for mm. he says i've come to get my siblings right, right. three right. two brothers right. and one sister right right well, we are near. where is the car he yes. says it's this yes. bicycle right 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 that guy is a torch bearer he was a torch bearer mm. because we need torch bearers now that's true that's to bring true. hope to bring hope yes uh, you know because he took he says i am going to use this bicycle You're right he, he took one of my brothers in the front right. and the, my sister at the back. Right, 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 right. He started riding the bicycle. Mm -hmm. He tells this other guy, mm -hmm. you continue walking. You're right. In this road. You're right. So he would go and leave these people in yes, front yes. and say, continue to go. Right. He, he comes back again, right. picks up this wow. one. He wow. goes wow. beyond wow. and all sorts of wow. things. Wow. He took all of us yes. Yes. until we got to Zambia. Praise the Lord. So I'm I'm thinking, God, can mm. you raise some touch bearers? Amen. Yes, yes, yes. You know? So mm -hmm. I want you to, to just comment on how do we get touch bearers? You are one of the touch bearers, but we need touch bearers. You know, you, know, you talk about touch bearers, Pastor, and yeah. um, you're yeah, 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 saying I'm one of the touch bearers. But let me tell you my story. Yeah. April 2002. Okay. I the first of April 2002. Okay. That's when I was appointed CEO of Econet Wireless. Okay. To, of course. Sir. That's right. Yes. And now, um, and remember, I was coming from a technical background. Okay. I'd never run a company before, and and there were many people who thought that it was an April Fool's joke. <laughs> to have, ah, Munas, you know, this guy has no credentials. Okay. How come now this person is basically now CEO? Yeah. But let me just share in, uh, something that I really clung on to. Right. I got into my office and I said to God, and this is something that I do even up, up to today. Okay. Why am I telling this story? Because I really believe that even in the marketplace, we need men and women who have the correct relationship with God. Right. That is the only way you can be a torchbearer. Right, right. Because in my own capacity, on my own strength, right. I cannot do it. Right. I got into my office, and I remember I literally refused to sit on the CEO stage chair. It was too big. Okay. <laughs> so I said, no, I'm not going to sit on that chair. Okay. I found a smaller chair okay. and put it on the side. Okay. I said, God, I know you are here with me. Okay. You sit there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I will sit on this smaller chair, okay. and the two of us were going to run this company. My God. And I tell you, Pastor... I sat on the CEO's chair after six months. Praise God. Because after six months, I kind of got a feeling that the Lord was saying, tell you what, right. I've moved with you long enough. <laughs> you sit <laughs> down. <laughs> but, but, but even from that stage, I kept on hanging on to the hope that I had in the God of heaven. Up to today, mm -hmm. that's my attitude. When I walk into my office, yeah. I realize that it's not my strength. Right. I need to Hold on to somebody who is stronger than me. Right. And that is God. My now, God. this message, I believe, is not only message, a message for the marketplace. Right. This is a message for the nations. Right. For, for presidents, right. for ministers, yes. for governors, right. for judges, mm -hmm. to say, I judge with the strength that comes from God. Right. I believe that when we do that, right. when we do that, like Daniel did in the Bible, right like Joseph did in, even when he was in Egypt, mm. we become torchbearers. Okay. Torchbearers can only be a result of holding on to something that gives light. Uh -huh. And the only one who gives light is Christ Jesus himself. In fact, you know, <laughs> I'm reminded there are right. many torchbearers. Right, right. But one who comes into mind yes. 
is Martin Luther King. Right, right, right. Martin Luther King started talking to his people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He says, I have a dream. I have a dream. That yes. one day the sons of four right, slave owners right, 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 right. shall sit down on yes. the same table That's right. brotherhood That's right. and say free at last. That's right, yes. The people yes. looking at him say, What is he talking about? He's talking about right. because slavery then mm, was mm. so much. Right, right. But to me, Martin Luther was a torchbearer. Of course. He brought hope. Correct, correct. The things he was talking about, yes, if yes. you see them now, right, they've right. happened. Correct, correct. So we need to raise more torchbearers. Correct. But you, you see the good thing about it, you can be a torchbearer mm -hmm. like my brother. Mm -hmm. It was for his family, mm -hmm. you for your company. Right, right. You know right. that kind yes, of thing, yes, yes. yes. But then uh, how do we strengthen these torchbearers mm -hmm. to come forward? and give us their dreams, you know, that kind of thing. Yes. Pastor, that's a, that's a very deep question. Yeah. How do we strengthen these torchbearers? And I believe that even a platform such as what we, have, what we are doing right, right. now, yeah. to talk about these things, mm -hmm. to invite each other to platforms where we can strengthen one another. You know, the Bible says it's iron sharpens iron. Yes. A brother, a brother sharpens a, a, another brother or sister to sister. And I believe that we need to pass the baton stick right. to others who can run the same race with vigor and energy. Mm -hmm. So how do we find these torchbearers? Right. I think these torchbearers must step forward. But not only them, those who are also able to mentor them right. must also step forward, mm. connect them, and we begin to sharpen one another. Right. I mean, look at how the Lord Jesus Christ himself raise the 12 disciples. I mean, these were people who were in the marketplace, fishermen, Peter, people like Peter, John, and so forth. But he was able to mobilize them yeah. and to mentor them. So this issue of mentorship is actually quite deep. That one is serious. It is. And, 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 and I'm saying that we need people to come out and mentor others. Right. And I can actually say, I volunteer to be one of them. Okay. In my own capacity right. to do that. And to strengthen you, you know when you talk yeah. about mentorship, right. for me, <laughs> right. it, I mean, it might be embarrassing to other people. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I never grew up in, mm. in, in a city. Mm. You know, it was in the township. Right. And right. Uh, the toilets were, you know, the, the ones which you, you know, right. there is no these ones which you sit right, on. Right, right, right. Yes, yes. yes. So, uh, one of the person who became my mentor, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because one of the things yes. which I have a problem, right. a lot of these young people don't have mentors. Right, right. I always ask, who is mm. your mentor? Mm. You know, that kind mm. of things. Mm. But one of the people who yes. was my mentor yes. was my wife. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You yes. know, <laughs> yes. one day she calls me. Right. Ut iwe. Mm. I said, yes, come here. Yes. So I go, she was like a small woman. You know, right. I said, then... He says, who used this toilet? Right, right. I said, you know. <laughs> and then she says, Iwe, right. when you are using this toilet, right. Right. you must put your legs right. Bakati, right. Ukunu uku. right. then you aim here. Right. You understand. Right, right, right. I'm telling you, I yeah. said, this is a woman. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> but to me, right. I mean, we were coming from where you could stand very Correct. far. You could, you right, know, you right. Yourself. But right. my wife became a man. She yes. was a mentor. To that's me. right, that's right. She taught me some things. Correct. Which I never grew up that's with. That's correct. That's you know correct. that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yes, yes. And if there is a guy mm -hmm. who is very good at using mm -hmm. toilets, it's mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Because, because I was we were mentored. mentored. <laughs> that's right, yeah. yeah. Because every time yeah. that picture would come, correct, you yes. know that kind yes, of thing. Yes, yes. And I make sure that, okay, that's right. this thing is in between. Right. And all sorts of things. Right. You know, right. Like right. So your mentor mm -hmm. can be, you know, it can be anybody. It can be anybody. And I think one issue which is required in mentorship is being frank with one another. Uh -huh. Not beating about the bush. Right. Being frank with one another. Honesty, transparency in everything. Right. Because it's not a question of do as I talk, mm -hmm. but do as I do. Right. Follow my. You see, Paul would say, imitate me as I meet, uh -huh. imitate Christ. That's what we need. We need authentic, genuine mentors. Right. Where if you follow them, right. what they do testifies to what they say, what they talk about. So that is very serious. And so, I th 
That's one of the things we should pray for. Absolutely. In fact, I've gone a step further in my own sphere, okay. Pastor, where in my own village, I've gone back to the village. Okay. Because I know that, you know, the village, you know, remember, almost 70% of our population is in the village. Oh, yeah, of course. And I grew up in the village. Mm -hmm. And I said, look, let me go and start in the village. Right. So I went into the village with my wife, mm -hmm. and we are starting small groups of young people where we are teaching them basic things. Right. The things that you are talking about, for example, right. just using basic facilities. Okay. We are taking them to sites where they can actually see these things for themselves. Right. From an early stage. Mm -hmm. And then we are telling them, you are leaders. Because the, way the Bible says you are the head and not the tail. Right. So you are leaders. Right. That is part of mentoring them, really encouraging them. And we are saying, no, have hope beyond what you are seeing in the village. Mm -hmm. Because God is going to take you far. And when they say, oh, what, did, what do you mean? I say, look at me. I also came from the same village. Yeah. But God has taken me somewhere. Right. So he will take you even better to better places than where I am now. Oh. So for me, these are deep, deep issues. Right. Which I think we must actually focus on in mentoring one another to say, let us be frank, blunt with one another as we move forward. I'm, I'm happy that yes. we have hope in the Bible because <laughs> I, I'm worried about many young people mm, who don't mm, have mentors, mm, mm -hmm, you know, mm, mm, who can mm. give them hope. Right, right. Because right. at the moment, right. you can see yeah. that, you know, we have come to a situation where, you know, young people are throwing in a towel. Mm, you know, when mm. you throw in a towel when mm. you are, you know, boxing, yeah, right. uh, you are surrendering. <laughs> you are surrendering. That's good. Yes, you know, yes, that kind yes. of thing. And I'm saying to, you know, some of you young people, don't surrender. Mm. Don't throw in that towel. Mm. You know, that kind mm. of things mm. because mm. there is hope. Absolutely. You know, there is hope. That's true. And for, for me, uh, I mean, when we're in Zambia, we threw in a towel. Mm. We thought we were finished. Wow. Yeah. We, wow. we were very bitter, wow. you know, because our father had left us. Mm -hmm. And so we used to beat to another. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we yes. were fighters. Right. <laughs> mm. My mother was called Agnes. So, right. Agnes, yes, Agnes. Yes, People, yes. People, my neighbors would say, you right. Agnes. Right. And right. my mother would say to them, please, mm. don't mm -hmm. make noise to me. Right, right, right. Because I don't know what to do with these children. Wow. Wow. So my mother had no hope. Mm. But thank God. Thank God. For somebody who introduced me to Christ, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know that kind right, of things. Right. When Christ came into my life, mm -hmm. brought hope into my life, right, right. that's when I started seeing a turnaround of my whole family. Praise the Lord. You know that kind Praise of things. Praise the Lord. Yes. yes. So I believe mm. that if I... The mm. one who is mm. thrown away and my father, he right, had no right, I right. saw my father for the first time mm. when I was 25 years old wow. during independence. Wow. That's when we came from Zambia. Right, right, I right. came over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guy who took me to see my father, mm. he didn't tell me that, he, you know, show mm. you your father. Mm. No, he didn't. Mm. He just says, there's this old man on this mm. you know, farm. Mm. So we went. Mm. They greeted each other. Mm -hmm. So me, I also greeted this old man. <laughs> he asked, he says, Mamu Zewaere, do you know mm -hmm. this guy? He looks at me, he says, ah, no, I can be wrong. Right. He says, Tarisi says, look again. Right. You know, because my features were like my father a bit, yes, you know, yes, kind of. Yes. He asked me, what did you know this person? Mm. I said, no. Well, you also said you come. don't know this guy. Yes, I've just mm. come from mm. Then mm. he said to my father, he mm. went, mm. this is your son, Langton. Wow. 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 Then my father went, uh, uh, wow. Uh. Wow. Wow. So me, I was mixed emotions. I didn't know how to react. Mm. I was expecting, you know, Zibaba, Zibaba. <laughs> Just look at this miscellaneous right. looking man mm. and say, this is your father. Mm. I didn't know whether to cry or wow. to do what. Wow. You know, that kind wow. of things. But then, the good thing about it, right. I came to know my father. Praise the Lord. All right. But my father could not hold the torch. Mm. I became the torch You bearer. became the torch bearer, yes. You know, yes, yes. I, I, I led my father to the Lord. Mm. My father died in my house. Wow. You know, suddenly I saw the turn around. Mm. So mm. for me, this issue of hope now, right, right. it means a lot. Mm. Mm. You mm. know, it mm. means a lot. Mm. And we need to encourage somebody. Yes. Dr. Mboweni, mm. your last words on hope to somebody who is listening to us. You know, my, my last words is this, uh, Pastor, hope is about promises 
that you believe are going to be fulfilled. That is hope. So my advice would be to any individual, young and old, mm -hmm. cling on to promises that you are sure are going to be fulfilled as yeah. you go into the future. Mm -hmm. In other words, as you move in, into the future with your life, write them down. Right. What are the promises of God? Mm -hmm. You know, I know a lot of people who even have got prophetic messages. Mm -hmm. I have got prophetic messages okay. that I'm holding on to, and I hold God accountable to those. Hmm. So, because you need something that you can anchor on. Right. So my advice is find those promises that are applicable and don't let anything derail you. Cool. Whether economic issues, mm -hmm. whether financial issues, whether health issues or whatever, cling on to the promises, particularly the promises of the word of God. Because God is not a man or a son of man that, that he can should... repent. My God. That's my, that my, is my advice. God. What more can you tell us? Somebody there, I want to say to mm. you, mm -hmm. we have hope. Yeah, God yeah. is not a man that he should lie. That's correct. Let's go back to the word of God. Let's go back to the word of God. Dr. Mboeni, thank you very much for giving us. And please continue to be a torchbearer. Thank you very much. God Pastor. bless.